New Jersey will now require school districts to offer free menstrual products for grades 6 through 12. Governor Phil Murphy says it promotes equity at every level in the state. Under the law, schools are required to make sure students have direct access to menstrual products and at least half of female and gender neutral bathrooms for free. And the state will pick up any additional costs the school takes on. The law will impact about 354,000 female students, according to the state. And New Jersey joins 10 other states and the District of Columbia to establish or expand requirements for menstrual products in schools. Here to talk more about this is manager of National Engagement Alliance for period supplies, Jennifer Gaines. Jennifer, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Kelly. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So why are laws like these important for students? Do you think they help to close a poverty gap? Yeah, for sure. And I'd like to, for your audience, so period poverty, simply put, is a person's inability to afford the period supplies that they need to adequately manage their period. So products like pads, tampons, liners, period underwear, or cleansing wipes. So it's also the lack of access to proper hygiene facilities and menstrual health education. And so when we're passing laws in this country to make period products mandated in schools really does help students to go to school with the um, basic necessities that they need. So that was going to be my next question, because I think some may argue, you know, why should we be paying for this? And I think the biggest argument on the other side would be having access to these menstrual products can impact young girls' decisions to go to school. Um, we have here a statement from New Jersey State Majority Leader Teresa Ruiz. She says, quote, um, hygiene products are a necessity, not a luxury. When this becomes an obstacle, decisions are made to not attend school. The loss is greater than just one day. Do you think that is the biggest reason why this is so important? Yeah, absolutely. When someone doesn't have the basic necessities that they need to manage their period, they're forced to miss out on daily activities like going to work to earn an income or going to school to gain education. So a recent study shown that two out of five individuals have reported struggling to afford these products and one out of four students have missed schools due to the lack of period products. So when you put it on a national level perspective in our country today, there are over 70 million women, girls, and people who menstruate between the ages of 12 to 44. So of these 70 million, one in six lives below the federal poverty line. And that means that there are millions of people who menstruate in our country today that live in poverty and are unable to afford the basic necessities they need just to get by. Um, so they're already suffering from effects of poverty, um, you know, experiencing food insecurity, housing insecurity, really just trying to get day by day. And now we're also burdened by the issue of not having an adequate supply of period supplies they need each month. So do you think more states will follow suit with this mission? Yeah, absolutely. And that's our mission here at Alliance for Period Supplies is to raise awareness about the issue of period poverty on a national level and educate the public on how this critical and silent public health issue affects millions of individuals across the country. So we advocate for legislative changes and advancement of laws to make period supplies more accessible and affordable. So in the last two years, we have definitely seen um, a stride in states adopting these laws. And there's still more work to be done, of course, um, but we are definitely seeing um, that wave of states passing these laws for sure. So what's some of the biggest pushback uh, you get to this idea, Jennifer? And what do you say to the states or lawmakers who may not want to pass laws like these? Biggest things is the stigma behind talking about periods, right? It's not a normal conversation. So what we like to do is to break the stigma and let's continue to talk and educate our legislators and normalize periods so that they can learn about this issue and push forward bills that are going to help millions of individuals in this country today to get access to these basic necessities. Um, one of the things too is that we can't do this alone. Our organization works with over 130 nonprofit organizations across the country representing 41 states and Washington, D.C., and they can't do this work alone. These are nonprofit organizations that are working to distribute millions of period products a year to their communities, and we need the help of the government. We need help of phil uh, ph philanthropic efforts. Um, we just need everybody on board, um, but most to break the stigma and normalize these conversations. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's Factory driven unbiased coverage.